The main character from Hollow Knight is really good at killing things. Old men, newborn babies, and yes, even people who are already dead. Throughout Hollow Nest are numerous ghosts, remnant memories of travelers long gone. There's the Gravedigger, who died after falling into a grave. There's Millibug, who died selling cookies, a dangerous profession indeed. And then there's Marissa, the butterfly who can be heard singing in the City of Tears. All of these ghosts can be struck with the dream nail in exchange for essence. Now this raises a slew of ethical questions about whether dream nailing a ghost is humane or not. Does the ghost constitute an actual conscious being? Is being a ghost better than not existing at all? Can they use their ghostly powers to shoot lightning out of the sky? The ghosts in Hollow Knight might seem pretty random, but that's because most of them were actually characters designed by Kickstarter backers. Hence why we get characters like this Guts knockoff, created by David Waldy, and Kassin, created by Nick. But today, we're going to look at one specific group of backer characters, the Dream Warriors. One of the Kickstarter backer rewards was to create a dream boss that the player would be able to fight. There were originally 10 backers for this tier, but only 7 backers provided details for characters. What happened to the other 3 backers you ask? Well, that's a good question. These bosses don't really give us any greater information about the lore of Hollow Knight, but that hasn't stopped literally billions of people from begging me to do a video on them. So without further ado, here's the Dream Warriors lore explained. First up, we have Zero, created by Constant Fam. This Dream Warrior is located in the resting grounds, and will probably be the first Dream Warrior new players find. Zero dreamt of cutting down the infection in his dreams. Because, you know, that's how you fight infectious diseases. Just give everybody swords, obviously. But then Zero actually turned his nail against the Pale King, likely due to being infected by the Radiance himself. This resulted in him getting executed. Before his betrayal, it seemed like Zero was actually a faithful soldier, fighting for Halonest and the Pale King. What exactly was he fighting against? Well, we hear about vague things like the Battle of the Black Worm, but other than that, I don't really know what Zero would have done. Seems like those bugs building the tram in Deep Nest could have used some military backup, but what do I know? Before the fight, Zero tells the Knight that those who hope are already doomed. After the fight, however, he realizes that those who turn against the King are doomed as soon as they raise their weapon. Honestly, I have no idea what this character's arc is supposed to be. But I guess character arcs don't always have to make sense, so whatever. Elder Who was created by Donald Lynch. He was a sage who traveled Halloness tending to those afflicted by the infection. Who died in the fungal waste nearby the Mantis village. He explains that the Mantises below had become mad with the infection. But of course, we know the Mantises weren't infected. So not only is Elder Who dead, but he's also stupid. After his defeat, Elder Who comes to the realization that he was the one infected, and that the Mantises actually killed him. This is a common theme among all Dream Warriors. They all think they are still alive when the Knight finds them. This is actually different from how Team Cherry originally asked backers to write their dialogue. From their original email explaining what details they needed from backers, Team Cherry expected the Dreamers to actually know they are dead. Also, the Dreamers were originally going to drop medals, that had little messages attached to them, which later became what we see in the Hunter's Journal. Another interesting change made is the location of the Dream Warriors. It appears the Warriors were all going to be found in one location, the Queen's Glade. We can tell from an old development map of Hallownest that the Queen's Glade was located where the current day Ancient Basin is found, just below the White Palace Foundation. The Glade was guarded by Fierce Drya, who was originally going to be a boss. In other words, there would have been 11 boss fights in just this one spot of the map. Honestly, I'm happy Team Cherry decided not to do this. Putting the Dream Warriors in their own locations makes them feel more organic, like they actually belong in the world. Elder Hu appears to be based on the Buddhist tradition, as he wears mala, or prayer beads around his neck. I would normally say this feels out of place, but it seems like Team Cherry is actually going to incorporate another character into Silksong who uses this same aesthetic, Chakra. 
so it seems like we might get a little more information about whatever group Elder Who was a part of when Hollow Knight Silksong releases in 2054. Galleon was created by Zachary Verdon and can be found in Deep Nest. Galleon proclaimed himself as the strongest warrior in Hollow Nest and claims he is only interested in fighting the knight for the sake of jolly combat. Galleon traveled into Deep Nest so that he could train himself by fighting the bugs found there, but he was eventually killed off by the beasts. What's interesting about Galleon is that he actually comments about seeing his own body laying on the ground, but he doesn't even recognize that it's him. That seems to confirm that ghosts are not just confused, but in denial about their own deaths. I mean, Wainer in the Spirit's Glade is literally holding his head in his hands and still thinks he is alive. Anyone who watches shows about real life, actual ghost hunting knows that ghosts tend to be human spirits trapped in the past, ignorant of the fact that they are ghosts. Another kind of interesting but not really fact is that Galleon is the only dream warrior to actually use a physical weapon during combat. The other dreamers just shoot magical projectiles or roll up into a ball or summon ghosts of their dead babies to attack you. Kind of makes me wonder how bugs like Zero and Gorb actually fought when they were alive. Marmu was created by Zara Pelin, aka William Pelin's own mother. Marmu acted as the protector of the Queen's Garden, waiting patiently for the return of her queen, presumably the White Lady. Apparently the White Lady was going to teach Marmu how to fly, which seems kind of odd considering the White Lady wouldn't know the first thing about flying, considering she is literally a plant. A flying root? What's next? Pigs walking on land? Marmu appears to be based on a real life insect called a pus moth caterpillar. This could be why Marmu talks about learning to fly, but this raises a lot of questions about how we should examine Hollow Knight lore. This would technically mean that Marmu is going to transform into a moth, but she doesn't seem to be related to the moth tribe. So are there groups of moths that wander around outside the moth tribe? Does Marmu even care about dreams of the dead, like the Moth Tribe did? Can Marmu shoot fucking swords out of her face? To me, it seems like Marmu really doesn't have anything to do with Seer and her group. Marmu being based on an insect that becomes a moth in real life doesn't mean this character has anything to do with the other moths. There just isn't a narrative or even aesthetic connection between them. This same thing happens with the Grubs. I always see comments from people trying to tell me that the grubs are going to turn into little radiances because they are caterpillars. And while that might make sense on the surface, we know that grubs turn into grubber flies, which is just a completely made up thing. The biology of bugs in Hollow Knight doesn't have to follow reality by any means. For all we know, Marmu might evolve into a 2001 Honda Civic. However, there is one dream warrior that is directly tied to the moth tribe, Markoth. Markoth is unique to the Moth Tribe, however, as he was one of the only members to take up a weapon. In fact, the only other Moth we know of who did this is Thistlewind, another Becker character found in the Spirit's Glade. Thistlewind even mentions Markoth, making him the only Dream Warrior to ever be acknowledged by anyone other than the Knight. Markoth can be found on the outskirts of the Kingdom's Edge. Thistlewind says he came out here to uncover some forgotten truth. Unfortunately, Markoth is too busy threatening us with death to tell us what he was looking for. Maybe he heard about the worm corpse, or maybe he wanted to learn about the hive, or maybe he wanted to see what was beyond this stupid ass tent. I was lucky enough to get into contact with Samuel Dixon, the backer who originally designed Markoth, and Samuel was even able to provide me with his original instructions for Markoth that he sent to Team Cherry. If we compare Samuel's dialogue to what made it into the final game, we can see that Team Cherry kept Markoth's battle-worn, stoic personality. However, after being defeated, Markoth gained some perspective in the final game, as opposed to still being a complete dick. Finally, we can see that the dialogue for the emblem Markoth would have given you is similar to the quote in the Hunter's Journal. According to Samuel, Markoth was supposed to position himself in the far corners of the room, and then throw two nails and his shield at the knight. The knight could then deal damage, which would prompt Markoth to move to a different corner of the room. In the final game, Markoth kinda just floats around wherever he wants, like a fart in the wind. Samuel didn't have any lore to share with me about Markoth, so whatever his connection is to the lore of Hallownest, it appears to have been manufactured by Team Cherry themselves. 
So unfortunately, we still don't really know the finer details of what truth Markoth was looking for. There is another incredibly cryptic dream warrior that we really do need to discuss. The deep and disturbing lore surrounding this character has haunted me for years now, and I think it's finally time we discuss them. I am of course talking about Gorb. A monument to Gorb can be found in the Howling Cliffs, where he is described as the Great Mind. Gorb claimed to contain all the world's knowledge inside his giant brain. Gorb demanded that others bow to him and ascend with him. What does it mean to ascend with Gorb exactly? Was he handing out pamphlets or something? A pretty common theory is that Gorb is actually a God Seeker. This is because of visual similarities and the fact that the God Seeker never shuts up about ascending. However, I would say that Gorb appears to be more like a slug creature, while the God Seekers appear to be bandaged up like mummies, so we don't really know what they look like underneath. So that's one point against the theory. Also, apparently the God Seekers have absolutely beautiful faces underneath their masks, and if we look at Gorb's face... Well, actually that checks out. So what does the actual dialogue say about Gorb? The Hunter's Journal entry describes Gorb as being a mysterious life form. That's a really interesting word to use. Now obviously any living thing is a life form, but the connection surrounding that word is usually linked to extraterrestrial life. So does this mean Gorb is some kind of alien? That's not all. The Hall of Gods also gives a pretty interesting description for Gorb, calling him a dreamborn god of the beyond. What exactly is the beyond? Could it be outer space? Maybe ascending with Gorb is literally ascending in some kind of spaceship. I mean, the architecture of Halonest seems far too complex for simple bugs. It would make much more sense if there was some advanced alien race helping build these monuments. All of the unexplainable aspects of Hollow Knight lore have an answer. Where did Breda go? Aliens. How did the Hollow Knight grow? Aliens. The Pentagon? Aliens. Now obviously I am mostly joking, but there really isn't much to go on with Gorb. The concept of the mind and using it to ascend is a noticeable theme in Hollow Knight, but there doesn't seem to be anything special about Gorb. Gorb was created by Alabar Apoponii. Perhaps he could shed some light on why Gorb's backstory is so incredibly vague and odd. I was able to get into contact with Alabar, but apparently he didn't really have a backstory for Gorb. He didn't even give Gorb a name. All he gave Team Cherry was this drawing. This early version of Gorb was a slug that wielded a nail in his mouth. The idea was that he tricked the player into thinking he was weak, but in reality he had great defense. So it seems all of Gorb's strange alien nonsense came from Team Cherry themselves. This leaves us with one final dream warrior, No Eyes. No Eyes can be found in the Stone Sanctuary in Greenpath. She was a warrior who disappeared during the infection. Out of all the dream warriors in the game, I'd say No Eyes is the most interesting and the most cryptic. No Eyes was first revealed in a Kickstarter update where Team Cheer explained that her backstory was one of the most disturbing bits of fiction they had ever read. Unfortunately, they didn't share any details on what her original backstory is, but luckily someone on Reddit was able to contact the original backer, Lisa Kretschemar, and provide us with No Eyes backstory. According to the Reddit post, No Eyes was off on a quest when the infection spread throughout Hallownest. She had left her children behind, thinking they would be safe. When she returned, she refused to believe that her children could have been killed by the infection, so she ran inside the sanctuary to get them out safely. She found them inside, both maddened and hungry. No Eyes tried to pick up some of her children, but they swarmed her, devouring her eyes along with the rest of her body. No Eyes' ghost would warn the player to stay away from the sanctuary. Her nursery rhyme that she sings was supposed to actually be instructions on how the player needs to move throughout the room in order to avoid getting hit by the children. The whole battle was just avoiding the ghosts until all the rounds were finished. Of course, in the final game, the ghosts are just the way No Eyes attacks, as she teleports around the room. And the nursery rhyme is just gibberish. Creepy gibberish. This backstory kind of makes sense with No Eyes' quote in the Hunter's Journal, which reads, 
They're coming. What's inside of you? Strip it out. It appears as though Noise eyes is warning others about her children coming to eat their eyes out. When the knight interacts with her, she seems to think the knight is one of her children at first. We've seen this before that sometimes ghosts don't really understand what they are looking at. And well, no eyes is fucking blind, so she'd probably think anyone who walked in there would be her child. And she starts by saying, please don't hurt me, which reinforced the idea that her children attacked her. But then the dialogue takes a bit of a turn. No eyes says that the knight can't sleep with its eyes open, and it can't dream if it's still breathing. Judging by the sentence structure here, No eyes wants the knight to stop breathing so it can dream. There's a pretty strong parallel to the radiance here, especially when we look at No Eyes' other dialogue. So this means No Eyes might have succumbed to the infection. We know that Zero and Elder Who met similar fates, but this isn't guaranteed for all Dream Warriors. Galleon died because he was a moron, and Gore probably died from a coke overdose. So it might be that No Eyes was infected and then decided to strip the eyes out of her children so that they could sleep and dream too. That would explain why the ghosts she summons also appear to be missing their eyes. We can tell from Noai's next line that this resulted in her children saying loathsome things while they slept. This might be a reference to the fact that these bugs' ghosts still haunt the stone sanctuary. Another explanation is that Noai's tore everyone's eyes out as a preemptive measure to try and stop the infection from getting to them. Basically, she's blinded all her kids out of fear, but ultimately, they all still perished. After the battle with the knight, we see that all of these spirits are finally put to rest, and No Eyes embraces being taken to a place where the Radiance's light and dreams can't haunt her and her children anymore. I'm not really sure how the line, they're coming, fits into either of these two interpretations. Who are they, if not No Eyes' children? The Radiance? Other infected bugs? Regardless, it does seem like Team Cherry tweaked Lisa's original story at least a bit. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the Dream Warriors. They haven't been discussed much on this channel, but that's mainly just because they are pretty inconsequential to anything that actually happens, unlike, say, a character like Menderbug. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. Small pointless details are what make Hollow Knight such an amazing game, like how the bench in the archive has Modamon's face on it, or how the glowing womb bugs turn into little turds when you have the Defender's Crest equipped, or how the Nailsmith's rotting corpse can be found in the junk pit. Amazing. By the way, have you heard of a little hellhole called Discord? If so, maybe you'd like to check out my new Discord server called Mossbag and Friends. There you can talk about all things Hollow Knight or Mossbag related, like discussing the moral implications of dream nailing ghosts, or bitching about how the latest Indie World presentation didn't shadow drop Silksong. We even have some amazing invite and banner art created by Zamzam and Yoklesh. So please check the link in the description if you're interested. And let's see how long it takes before I regret ever creating this server. I'm thinking... April.